Next, I'd like to discuss doing all those permutations leading with your left hand. So it's exactly the same thing, but now we're starting with the left hand. Uh, this can get quite tricky when a person really starts working on their, their weaker limb because it's the weaker limb, so it can be a little bit uh, frustrating at times. What I suggest you do is sandwich it between stuff that you either really enjoy or that you're really good at because in that way you're feeling good and confident and enjoying yourself and then you go do something hard that might become quite discouraging and then you just go back to something good and, and it's just those gradual steps you know if you could sandwich it between some positive stuff you'll be that much more successful at it and it'll create that much more longevity your focus will be better and you'll, you'll have more of a positive attitude so now with the left hand same accent scheme it goes like this. And then what we do is take it again up to the toms, crashes, and the hi-hat. So I'll play the first one with a beat. Go like this. So you see, starting with the left, ending with the left. <clears throat> Makes it that much more difficult too because you got the left hand hitting with the right foot. So again, slowly, slowly, your body will begin to memorize it. It's just like if you're trying to memorize a poem or a sonnet, you know, you're not gonna take the whole thing all at once. It goes ah, as fast as you can. You just take one line or a phrase at a time and kind of uh, um, connect some word pictures to it and, and some visuals and that to help you memorize. It's the same thing. You, you want to get your muscles to memorize the pattern because when I'm playing and doing fills, I'm not thinking 16th dot at 8th, 16th, 30 second double. You know, it's, I'm not thinking anything, you know, just flowing and reacting to the music. So this whole section here is to eliminate, eliminate any limitations that you may have or may encounter through your limbs. Because, you know, are you able to see now how it's kind of getting your limbs moving around? It gives you greater agility. You know, it, it's just, it's basically working on your technique. And I had some students, you know, why do I need to learn this? And why do I need to learn the rudiments? It's working on your technique. It's, uh, it's basically, you know, how toddlers learn how to walk and eventually they're running. Some of them run first, but you know, there's a building process to it. And working on your technique creates all kinds of avenues. It's like a bodybuilder, you know, he or she's working out in the gym and, you know, you get them to help you move. You know, for them to pick up a Chesterfield or a big TV or something, it's quite easy because they're strong because of their training that they've done at the gym. It's the same concept here with our technique. You do this training or exercises, when you go to do your fills, it's going to come that much more natural and it's going to flow and that way you'll be able to express yourself easier. So now for the next approach with leading with the left hand, we take it up to the toms. Again, left hand accent, first tom right hand accent floor tom. So it'll be like this, just the fill. And now with the beat. Next, we take it up to the crashes with the accents, like this. And now with the beat. So you, you don't want to just get to this tempo, you want to push yourself, you know, start it slow and even because 
the more even you are, the, actually the faster it'll sound. If you try going fast and it's uneven, it's not going to sound as fast as it could be if it's even. So you want to always make sure it's even, but then push your tempo, push the envelope. Next, we're going to do it with the open hi-hat, with the crash, just the fill, like this. And now with the beat. So hopefully you can see now how it's not just getting your hands going, it's getting all four limbs going. So it's, it's not going to help just with your fills, it's going to help with your beats and everything, your soloing and that. So it's just going to help you to be more liberated behind the kit. Next, what you would do for our permutations is do the same thing, leading with the left hand, but now doubling the unaccented notes, which again are always on the snare. So if I was to do that left hand lead, just on the snare with the rim shots, with the double strokes, it would sound like this. With the double stroke in the bounce routine for this permutation, it's, it's more challenging to do it slower because the stick will naturally bounce at a certain tempo, like this. Now to do a double stroke slower in that, in a bounce routine, is very difficult. I wouldn't do it, I'd use wrist. So right away you can see the speed of a natural bounce. So if you're trying to bounce it, to make it smooth, it'll have to be up at a certain tempo. But I suggest practicing it slow, how I showed you with the leading with the right hand, just nice and open and clean before you take it faster. Just keep in mind, if you're doing double slow, it's a wrist technique. If you're doing it fast, it's a bounce technique. 